All right, let's take a look at the last support mechanism that we want to talk about, and that's the hinge. Okay, there's a lot of different kinds of hinges, and this can also include some sort of a ball bearing, uh, a ball bearing axle support mechanism, right? So I might have, say, an axle uh, inside of a round ball bearing mechanism. The question then becomes, is the axle free to move in this direction? In some cases, the answer to that question is no. In other cases, the answer to that question is yes. But clearly, it's not allowed to move towards the camera, so there's no Z forces, excuse me, it's no Z moment allowed, so there are definitely Z forces. Also, you can't move it up and down, right? You can't move it up and down, and so Y forces are being determined. But whether or not you can move it along the axis, that will depend on the type of system that you have, right? So in a ball bearing system that's free to move axially, that's going to be fine. Uh, there are a lot of door mechanisms that allow that. They'll swing back and forth, but you can also push them left and right. So that's an allowed motion. Uh, barn doors, a lot of the new barn doors that are at homes uh, are that kind of a thing. You know, they'll swing a little bit, but they're made to roll left and right. But they can swing back and forth like on a hinge. So another similar example would just be the hinges on a door, which of course are very good, but uh, a perfect example, but this is also a good hinge right here on this CD case. You know what a CD is. I don't make these much anymore, right? So here's a CD case. In general, I cannot move it left and right. So there is an axial force, but there are times when the axial force will be zero. That's why I put the question mark here. So FX is sometimes zero. You want to look at the problem and see whether or not it makes a statement like no axial forces are, are part of this problem or something like that. All right, so that's the axial force, so keep an eye on that. But definitely the hinge is not going to allow forces in the, in the Z direction towards you or away from you, and the hinge does not allow movement up and down in the Y direction. So I definitely have Y forces and Z forces. Of course, if I move the hinge into a different, different orientation, things are going to be different, but you get the idea. <coughs> now, along in this case, along the X axis, there are no moments exerted by the hinge. It's free to rotate in the X and the Y direction. It's free to rotate in the X and Y direction. However, it is not necessarily free to rotate in the Y direction. What did I just say? It's free to rotate around the X axis. Let me rephrase that. It's free to rotate around the X axis. But it's not free to rotate around the Y axis. It's not free to rotate around the Z axis, okay? But having said all that, very often the Y and the Z moments are very small compared to other moments in the system. So you gotta be a little careful about that. Generally, I assume that they're small unless I see that the system's quite exaggerated, um, and then I'm, gonna, then I'm gonna assume that they're there. For example, if I had a hinge system like this, and I am lifting up on this corner with a relatively large force, that's gonna try and twist this thing. These hinges are definitely keeping that twisting from taking place. And so oftentimes they're zero or negligible, but not always. And it's just going to be up to you to try and figure out what that's going to be. And is it going to be something you have to take into account? When in doubt, I ignore them, okay? But if you have a system of equations where if you can add in an X or a Y and a Z moment equation, and you have enough unknowns to add those equations in, go for it. But sometimes if you add the Y and the Z moments into the system, you might have more unknowns than you have equations. If that's the case, go ahead and ignore these two and see whether or not you can then solve your systems of equations. All right, so they're oftentimes negligible, certainly not always. If I, if I take two out of my three hinges off of my door, I'm going to get a moment out of that third hinge that's left there because it's trying to keep that door supported. Right? So that's definitely going to happen. Uh, but you just kind of have to see how well balanced is it, right? So if I have a trap door or something like that and I'm trying to lift this up and down, generally these moments are negligible for that problem. All right, so that's the hinges. There's one other uh, kind of a uh, system that you want to look at and that's the universal joint. I'm not going to talk about that simply because I don't have the expertise I feel I want to have in order to, to talk about that much. Uh, but that one's going to not allow X, Y, and Z forces, and it's not going to allow one moment around one of the axes. Uh, and that will depend on the problem. 
So take a look at what you, at you, what you find in your textbook and go with that. Uh, but I don't want to talk about it in too much detail. All right. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. Thank you.